Oh, oh my golly, look at those. Wow, those are something else. Thanks for joining us again, everyone. This is our newest segment, The Joy of Welding. It's where we dive into our community inside the Weld app and see if we can not help some of these novice welders on their journey in their welding career. Let's take another look at today's student. Today's student in the Weld app is Wizboy19884. Ooh wee, and he's having a good time with MIG. Really introduction process right here with the beads on plate with overlapping welds. While it does look like your settings might be just appropriate, Wizboy, you've got some serious issues in this weld. You've got a lot of overlapping problems, valleys, undercut, and a little bit of inconsistency in those beads with your travel speed. Overall, you should be proud of the progress that you've made, but I would not be proud of taking a grade on this just yet. Before we get to all the extremely exciting stuff, we've got to jump into this Rebel 285 IC. We've got the 035 diameter 70S6 wire already run through our gun out to the front of the contact tip. Outstanding. We've got 7525 mixed gas for our shielding gas. And this Rebel 285 is fantastic because it does have that SMIG option where you can set your wire thickness and your material thickness. And for today, we're running 035 on quarter inch plate. And it's gonna give you some parameters to run, which is fantastic. But I do love doing it myself and manually because some of those machines out there don't have these fun features. So we're looking at it right now. This is the settings that I prefer for something around quarter inch. These are arbitrary at best. You can do whatever you'd like. So we're gonna run 19.5 and 280 on that wire feed speed. What the trick is, is to make sure that these two things are in sync so that your weld is phenomenal. If you're having troubles with these settings, check out this video here. Now that the machine is ready to rock and roll, I noticed something, Mr. Wizboy. You didn't bother prepping this here plate. We've got a piece of quarter inch mild steel with all the mill skill left on it, just like you did. I really recommend getting all that mill skill off of the grinding rock. At least wire wheel the sucker, please. Get that material clean and you'll notice that you'll have a much prettier looking weld that you might see on social media. Now, speaking of quality prep, prep yourself for Clash of the Grinders coming in later this year where you can win up to $15,000 cash if you're selected. You can find out a lot more information on our website on weld.com. See now, that didn't take but just a couple seconds, maybe a minute tops, and now we have a nice clean piece of material to weld on. Now these grinding marks can be kind of hard to see as you're welding across. Trying to make that straight line is going to be extremely crucial. So we're gonna take our silly old speed square here, line it up, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a Sharpie marker, soapstone, doesn't matter. We're gonna go ahead and put us a nice line. I don't really love starting my weld right on the edge because that edge doesn't hold a lot of heat very well and it tends to be a little bit more difficult. Now this line isn't gonna hold up to our serious sparks and spatter and all the heat that we're gonna put into it. So I am gonna take this cutoff wheel and make that first little score so that I have a good clean line to follow. I'm only gonna do this for the first weld, but it makes everything just fantastic to get you off to a good start. Now that we've got our machine set, our material prepped, and we've set ourselves up for success on this first bead, go ahead and clip the end of this wire, get the right stick out and contact to work distance and get comfortable. You wanna make sure you get those dry runs in. As far as a pull or a push starting out, don't worry about it. I like to just go ahead and start with the pull and we'll move into those push motions. We'll show you here and there. But let's go ahead and make this first bead. My personal preference is these little cursive E's. Now you're allowed to do whatever oscillation you'd like. You could do circles, E's, whatever you please. Maybe even a little half moons. What's important now is that we follow our guideline and make the straightest beat possible so that we set ourselves up for success for the rest of this plate. Oops, I made a little start and stop there. I couldn't see. If you can't see, it's okay to stop. But just go ahead and make that tie in. We'll get into those a little bit further down. Now that we've got our first weld on there, and I think it, it looks just OBKB. You know, this will get us done, get by. The important thing is that we have the same height, the same width, and the same weld size all the way across the plate. Now, before we can continue, I do highly recommend taking one of these here Jimmy wheels. You wanna know why I call them a Jimmy wheel? Because of Buffett. <laughs> Anywho, let's get to Jimmy in this weld. Just a quick little back and forth, and what that's gonna do is just keep things clean as you move forward, because Mr. Wiz, you weren't doing that. 
Now hold on there, gunslinger. We don't wanna just continue on. First, let's understand what we're trying to accomplish with these beads on plate. We wanna make sure that we are aiming for the toe of the previous weld we did before, but at the same time covering the highest point of that previous weld. Mr. Wiz, you had a lot of valleys, and what a valley is is leaving too much space in between the welds. So you might be trying to kind of go toe to toe with your weld when you should be having a toe to the crown of your bead. So that's what we're gonna continue to do and make sure that we have the proper overlap because these skills are gonna translate to fillet welds and groove welds all the way from structure to pipe. Now we're just gonna go ahead and bang out a couple beads real quick for you so that you can see the proper example of that overlap. Again, all I'm doing is just a little bit of a pulling out of my puddle, but not too far. And coming back in to fill in that same well side. I'm really watching the top edge of my bead, making sure that I hit the highest point of that weld before. Trying to keep the same weld size, travel angle, travel speed, and all those other essential variables we need to maintain. Give her a quick jimmy. And we'll continue. You might notice that your hands want to tend to pull down as you work towards the end of this plate. That's perfectly normal. You just have to know that it's coming and make sure that you don't fall off. What I like to do is set myself up at the end of the plate, reach to the front so that I know by the time I get to the end, I'm right where I want to be. Make sure I have all the things that I need to get there and then we're going to go to the front and continue the weld. Oh, silly me, I forgot to jimmy. Don't forget to jimmy, kids. It's a simple, quick step. Now I'm listening to that machine as I weld and I can tell there's something funny going on. To me, it sounds like I need a bit more wire in the weld. So I'm gonna turn my wire feed from 280 to closer to 300 and see if we can't mitigate that problem. Now as we go and make these welds, we wanna be doing our justice by cleaning and prepping and checking as we go and looking at either maybe the machine's off or maybe my gun angle, my torch angle. It's always a good idea about every three or four beads to go ahead and clean things off, check on your progress, make sure you're getting that proper overlap, and if you see any of those silly discontinuities, that you go ahead and see if you can't fix them. When I mean fix, the damage is already done, but make sure not to do it again. Let's get a closer look at this overlap. Now as we take a closer look, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this little silly wire to point out anything. We don't want any dips in between these beads. We're gonna call those valleys. Later on down the line, I do see somewhat of a valley starting to happen, but we got back on track. The important thing is that when we see that we're doing something wrong, we correct it. And that's the biggest thing with this learning process is making every bead better than your last. Trademark Jason Becker, Arc Junkies. We're gonna go ahead and continue this process and maybe make a couple mistakes and see if we can help you solve those problems too. Ooh, excuse me. I seem to be having that better sound with my MIG process from turning up that wire feed speed. I noticed the wire was just a little sluggish and it had those balls on the end of it. <laughs> what a silly way to say it. But yeah, it was dropping larger balls of wire into my puddle, telling me that my wire is a bit slow for the voltage. We get to the end of our plate. Decent bead, nice and straight. Give her a jimmy. Keep rolling. Ooh, that one's nice and straight. Let's make one not so much. Oh, don't forget that Jimmy. This here is a boo-boo. We don't want to be doing this. Now, I, again, this is more of the toe of the weld to the toe of the other weld instead of the toe of the weld to the crown of the previous weld. This is what's known as a valley, and it is in fact a defect. If these valleys go too low or past the base metal that you're working with, uh, especially in a groove weld, or, or just the fillet weld with not the proper throat or effective throat to it, 
you're going to get called by that QC or your instructor is going to let you know that, hey, this is no good, we don't want to be having those, and that's going to be points off your grade. One other thing that I noticed, Mr. Wiz, is your beads have a long arc into them. They're not really laser beam straight. We want to focus on getting it straight again. Now, if we've got a little bit of an arc in our bead, that's okay. We're learning. We're going to go ahead and get that cut wheel again, put a new straight line, and follow that. Anything that goes on after that, we want to try to get it straight again and not continue to make the same mistake in the same arch over and over and over and over again. That's the definition of insanity. This being a real introductory to gas metal arc welding and just running beads on plate, it is a phenomenal practice routine. These are like learning your scales as if you're learning an instrument. You've really got to fine tune yourself and experiment at the same time. You might want to try circles one time, ovals the next, or maybe try a little bit of a cursive heat or some form of oscillation that suits you. Now there's that always that argument that if there's slag, you drag, and a MIG is always a push process. We don't want to get into that argument because those people are silly. We like to do a drag or a push. It only matters if the company that you're working for or the instructor that is telling you to do so asks for that pull or push. The important thing is to be well-rounded and to be able to adjust and adapt to any environment. Now remember, Mr. Wiz, hood times are good times. Keeping your hood down, focused on the work that you're doing, and repetition is absolutely essential to this process. You don't want to be worried about a grade. You want to be getting these welds down pat. As far as the motion that you're doing, most of the time that I see a lot of people having issues, and it might be your problem too, is you're having a hard time seeing around this nozzle. It's big, it's bulky, it's in the way. What do you do? You move your head. Move your head somewhere where you can see what you're doing. Push, pull, doesn't matter. Just make sure that you can see what you're doing and that might let you stay inside your puddle a little bit better. I'm seeing those edge control on your beads. They're wide, you're stepping too far out but not giving it time to fill back in. You're not staying in your puddle. So remember, put your head in the right spot and stay in your puddle. Oh, we couldn't see, we had to stop. Let's talk about a tie-in. A lot of beginners are really intimidated by the tie-in process. And let me be the first to tell you, let's embrace them because we're gonna have to make plenty of them in our careers. Now, being that it is a semi-automatic process, a lot of beginners, they wanna just keep going. They don't wanna have to make that tie-in because again, it is intimidating. But let me tell you, all we're gonna do is we're gonna start ahead of this puddle and we're gonna come back and trace this crater. We're trying not to go outside of our edges, as well as the fact that we've already put metal down here, so we're gonna go ahead and boogie on down past that and keep on with our motion. It's gonna be quick. You're gonna have to watch close. Now I know that was quick, but if you're having a hard time with your tie-ins, don't avoid them. Do more of them. Practice on every bead, a start and a stop and also staggering where you started and where you stopped, because that's just good habits. <laughs> Got some silly little bugs flying in here that really want to have a death wish. Once you've made it from one end of the plate to the other, give everything a good jimmy. And inspect those welds thoroughly. Now one thing your instructor probably is gonna want you to do is keep welding, right? It's all practice, it's all procedure. If you want a nice, flat, smooth pad weld, you've gotta weld over something nice, smooth, and flat. So if you have high spots, go ahead and grind them down a little bit. If you have a low spot, go ahead and fill in that valley that you had. And then go the opposite direction of those beads that you did prior. I see that we're not all perfect. I have some happy little accidents there myself. And, you know, some of my beads are a little cattywampus, but that's okay. The goal is just to be better every single time. If you follow those simple ideals, you'll do just fine. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of The Joy of Welding. I know I did. We're gonna be doing a lot more of these series. So if you would like us to put your welds on the YouTube channel and see if we can't help you out in your welding journey, we're more than happy to do so. Go inside that weld app, tag me, Austin Hargett, in your work, and we'll try to get you lined out on the YouTube channel. As far as Mr. Whizbang, I hope you're not too content with what you put on that plate and you strive for a better weld like we all should. Thanks for watching.